Today we are talking about a evangelism tool and uh, there is a QR code there that you can scan and when you scan it with your cell phone you can download a PDF for evangelism. The title of, the, of this tool is God loves you very much and wants to bless you greatly. So uh, using God's love to help people to uh, be ready to believe in Jesus. Um, so this is a evangelism tool. Okay, and um, so everyone needs love, but it's hard to find real love. And many people feel unloved. And many people, you know, they, many people want, uh, want to get married in order to get love. But very often, they don't, uh, they don't experience love in a marriage sometimes, you know, that uh, they want to be loved, but in a marriage, they find it difficult. Uh, and so in this world, it's sometimes hard to find real love. But God the Creator is full of love, and He loves everyone without condition, and also He, um, he loves us so much that, and He's almighty, that He can help us. Uh, he can provide for us and bless us in every single way. So that is wonderful. He is full of love and is almighty. And so do you want to be loved? And uh, God's love is very real and can be experienced. Uh, and people's love uh, often don't last. But, um, but God's love lasts forever. And Christians can experience God's love in every area of their life. So we can experience God's love uh, in every area of our life. So first, God's creation and actions show His love. That you can see here in this picture, that uh, God created our body very wonderful, and our brain and every part of the body very wonderful. And also, God has put love into uh, the mother of human and of animals. You can see animals love their children very much and also animals can love each other too. So animals have feelings also and He has created beautiful nature. Uh, nature is so beautiful with flowers, trees, uh, the beaches, uh, and, uh, uh, and the birds and the butterflies. All these are very beautiful. And the earth, uh, Psalm 33, 5, the earth is full of the goodness of God. That uh, the earth is full of the goodness uh, that God created food and it's all wonderful. So we can see the love of God in the food we eat that it tastes so nice. So that's a wonderful uh, creation of God and he, he has prepared food that has different tastes and also they are good for our health. And human and animals have love. Shows that God is full of love. That He can create. God can create human and animals uh, with love. That means He has strong love. His love is much, much stronger than the love of human and of animals. And uh, He created our wonderful body. Psalm 139, 14. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. So uh, God has created our body very wonderful. And that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Our body is very, very wonderful. Okay. And uh, okay. So today, let me, let me type this. Okay, so we are wonderful, wonderfully made. Now, what does it mean by fearfully made? That means when we look at how wonderful our body is made, that we will say, well, God is so wonderful. God is almighty. God is full of love. And so we have this awe, this uh, respect for God. God, you are so worthy to be praised because you have created our body so wonderful so wonderfully. Our brain, our eye, our ear, every part is very wonderful. 
And God is very real, and His love and comfort and joy can be experienced. Now, these are uh, two persons I pray for. Uh, the first picture there, she experienced uh, the love of God, and she cried, and then she experienced joy. And then this, the third woman, uh, the third picture on the right, that she experienced uh, that her sadness coming out, and she cried. She cried because she experienced, you know, her sadness uh, coming out, and she felt relieved. She felt comforted. And also, he gave us sleep. Psalm 127, 2, for he grants sleep to those he loves. And Psalm 4, 8, I will both lie down in peace and sleep. So God can, uh, you know, make, uh, give us peace so that we can sleep well. So all this, uh, you know, some people have insomnia, they cannot sleep well, and I pray for many people, and then they experience the, uh, the peace of God, and then they can sleep well. Now, a second point here is that scientists found that our souls continue to exist after death, and they are proofs of heaven and hell. So, um, now some people thought that you know, after people die, they would just disappear. But there are proofs uh, from scientists, from doctors, uh, because they found that some people died, and then they die, and then they thought that you know, after they die, uh, uh, they would you know, feel nothing. But then they were resuscitated. They were resuscitated you know, because in a hospital that they sometimes you know, uh, push on the heart of the person, or they use machine, uh, to use electric shocks to help the person to come back to life. And then they were surprised. These people said, I saw you uh, after I died. I was floating above my body, and then I saw what you did. I heard what you said. And these doctors and scientists were amazed, and they start to study, large-scale study. They study many, many cases and found that it's all accurate that uh, what they saw, uh, uh, you know, were real. That they really saw what happened. And sometimes they put something on the roof, you know. Sometimes they put a, a message that doesn't make sense. For instance, uh, I eat iron, you know, iron that you know we cannot eat that. We cannot eat metal. And and when the person put that message on top of the roof, you know that. Generally, people you know will not be able to say something like that. But the person who was was dead, and then the soul left the body, and then came back and said that statement. So it shows that that they really not really did not disappear. They they died. Now you care about your house on earth, so do you care about your eternal home? Do you care about uh, where you live forever? Do you want to enjoy God's love in heaven, or do you want to be punished in hell forever? So there is really heaven and hell. There are proofs that heaven and hell are real. They do exist. So do you want to go to heaven where you can enjoy love and joy forever, or do you want to go to hell? Now, uh, 1 Kings 17, 21-22, it talks about the prophet Elijah. And there was a boy that died. And Elijah the prophet stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out to the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he revived. So here it explains what happened when, a ch uh, when the soul of a person left the body, then the person would die. And then when the soul came back, then the child came back to life. So in the Bible, it talks about that. The soul coming back, then the person will, will have life again. And modern method of resuscitation, you see down below here, helps many people's souls return to the body. That the souls return to the body and then they live again. Now sometimes it's from doctors that resuscitated the person. And sometimes it's from just God's action. Sometimes God just caused some people to, to come back to life again. And then they came back to life and then they could say what happened. 
so hundreds and of thousand people died and was resusc and were resuscitated by medical method they could describe what happened after they died this proves that people have souls that exist after death so there are uh, hundreds and thousands hundreds of thousands uh, cases that these people died and then they were resuscitated and they could uh, describe what happened after they died so this proves that after people die they don't disappear they don't they don't uh, you know lose consciousness they continue to have consciousness and then they you know the, they can describe it and it shows that they do have uh, that we do live on after death the point is where we go and then many Christians have gone to heaven and returned these Christians went to heaven and then there were different stories of people went to heaven and came back and so these are uh, books and then the Newsweek magazine uh, talk about heaven is real so all these are real stories and then many people also have gone to hell and returned and uh, that for some reason God gave them a chance uh, some of these people have heard about Jesus uh, maybe they went to Sunday school when they were young and then when they were on the way to hell they cried to Jesus Jesus save me save me take me out of hell and then Jesus took them out and and so these people they gave testimonies of what they saw in hell so that proves that that is a scientific proof because these people, they, they really can describe what happened after they die. This shows that, uh, that, uh, that after we die, we don't disappear. That we actually continue to exist. So that shows that uh, our, soul does, uh, our souls do continue to exist. And then we can come back. And then third, uh, proof that God is real. You know, first is, you know, God's love in nature, in creation, and second is God's uh, show us that we have a soul, we have, we have souls, and then a soul after we die actually either go to heaven or hell. And then the Bible has proofs related to science. Albert Einstein, the famous scientist, said, the more I study science, the more I believe in God. When these scientists, they study uh, science, they said, well, this universe is so wonderful now we can find those uh, videos uh, many of these videos online uh, in YouTube and other on, online uh, apps that we can see people giving testimony uh, about you know they study the evidence of God and they shows that God is real now in the Bible Job 26 7 that it says that God stretches out the north over the em over empty space he hangs the earth on nothing now in all ancient uh, 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 religious literature they always said you know the earth is flat but the Bible is the only one that says that the earth is hanging on nothing now people will say what well, that is impossible but now scientists know that the earth is circling around the sun is hanging on nothing in the outer space it's it's the uh the attraction force gravity gravitational force of the sun that holds the earth so that it can go around the uh, go around the the, uh, the sun and uh, just in empty space that space is the universe it's just you know stars going around each other uh, traveling in space hanging on nothing and you know humanly speaking how can people say that people would have no idea have no idea that earth is hanging on nothing until science discover that the earth is actually hanging on nothing is you know it, the earth is uh, circling around the Sun in the universe in empty space and I say a 40 verse 22 says that it is he who sits above the circle of the earth so it talks about the earth uh, not as a square but it's like a circle a a globe that is is like a ball in the in the universe that, that the earth is like a ball uh, hanging hanging out in outer space 
And then Job 38, 35. Now you can write down these Bible verses or you can watch this video again uh, on Facebook and then later on YouTube. Can you send out lightnings that they may go and say to you, here we are. So, you know, God said to Job that can you send out lightnings, you know, that's unimaginable by human. How can we send out lightnings? And then the lightning will send a message, message to say, here we are. But today, we know that we can use cell phone and tell people we are here. And lightnings, you know, because in, the, in those days, there was no household electricity. And lightnings are actually electricity, but it's very strong. The cell phone has very weak electricity, but it's still electricity. And then God, so God knew ahead of time in the future that we can use cell phones to send messages with electricity to tell people. And one message many people uh, send is, oh, I have come to your street already. I come to your city. Uh, I, uh, where are you now? I'm waiting for you. So uh, that is something we, use, uh, we say all the time on the phone that I'm here, where are you? So uh, that's wonderful. That's God knows ahead of time. God knew ahead of time about our scientific discoveries and about the earth. And there are other scientific proof, but I'm just showing these two simple ones. And in the Bible, there are many, in the Bible, there are many accurate prophecies uh, in the Bible. In Psalm 22, verse 14 to 18, this is a prophecy about the crucifixion of Jesus. Jesus was crucified. That David said, you know, David never, King David never had this happen to him. He, he was uh, in a vision, a very real wish, vision, that he experienced the crucifixion of Jesus. So he described the crucifixion as first person, that he said, it's me. I am poured out like water. All my blood is poured out. And all my bones are out of joint because when he was hanging on the cross, it feel like the bones are, are, are pulled out. So this is what the, the feeling of Jesus on the cross. My heart is like wax. It has melted within me because when he has lost blood, so his heart become weaker and weaker. My strength is dry up like a pot shirt. So no more strength because no more blood and my tongue clings to my jaws that is the tongue is very dry so it's hard to move the tongue you have brought me to the dust of death so it's you have brought me to death for dogs have surrounded me the congregation of the wicked have enclosed me so the wicked people have surrounded me they pierced my hand hands and my feet so this is the, uh, the prophecy of the crucifixion that they have cut through the hands and the feet of Jesus. Now, crucifixion was not used at the time of David. It was a few hundred years later that there was crucifixion. So David never knew, never heard of crucifixion, that the hands and feet appeared. He never heard of it. But he prophesied that because God gave him the picture, the clear picture. So this uh, clearly prophesy about Jesus and I can count all my bones because when you know when he, he lost a lot of blood then it's uh, you know that the whole body feel like you know it's feel very painful and so when we feel like for instance if we feel a headache then we feel my head a head and then if we have backache then you will feel our back and then if we have ache at the foot and then we can feel the foot because it's aching. So now he, he can count my, his bones because every bone is aching. They look and stare at me. So the people are staring at me. They divide my garments and they, for my clothing, they cast lots. So they, he pro, uh, David prophesied that Jesus' clothing will be divided. And then because his inner clothing is one piece, so it was uh, they, the soldiers cast lots and then uh, one person uh, took the inner clothing. So this is a clear description of crucifixion. And that was 1,000 years before Jesus' time. 
and it was a few hundred years later that there was crucifixion. And then Daniel prophesied clearly that the Christ will come and after Christ is killed, Jerusalem will be destroyed. So this is a historical fact and uh, Daniel already knew that ahead of time. Daniel 9.25 Know and understand this, from the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one the ruler comes, there will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens. So this is six times seven and sixty-two times seven. That is sixty-nine times seven. Sixty-nine times seven. Here you see down below. Seven times seven plus sixty-two times seven is four hundred and eighty-three. And this is exactly four hundred and eighty-three years from the time uh, you know, uh, from the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, that the Jews were given the order to go back to Jerusalem to the time when Christ was anointed, it was 483 years. So the Bible pro clearly prophesied the time of Jesus' coming. And then Jerusalem will be rebuilt with streets and a trench. But in times of trouble, they have not restored their nation. They, you know, they, they didn't get their nation back. Actually, after they lost the nation, uh, they never got it back until uh, recently in 1948. And after the 62 times 7, the anointed one will be put to death. So he will be killed and he will have nothing. So he died. The people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. So there will be a people of a ruler that will come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end and desolation have been decreed. So here uh, Daniel clearly prophesied that after, you know, first about the time of Jesus' second coming. No, I'm sorry. It's his first coming uh, when he would come to be anointed. Uh, to be the Christ. And then after he was killed, then uh, the people of the ruler, ruler uh, would be the, the Roman emperor that ordered the destruction of Jerusalem. They came and destroyed the city and the sanctuary and, uh, and then the temple was destroyed and the end will come like a flood and war will continue. And there was war in Jerusalem, in Israel, up to today, you know, that war has continued for a long, long time. Uh, that is a pro uh, that's a prophecy from the Bible. And desolation has been decreed that there will be destruction. And then, so now we knew that, that there are evidence about God, that, that there are, you know, that the creation shows God's love and so there is a creator and then, um, um, the scientific proof. Okay, so first, he is real that we can experience his love. That is his first proof that we can experience his love. And then secondly, the, uh, the scientists found that found that there was life after death. The people after they died, they actually saw what happened around them, and the souls left the body. And then, so many people went to heaven and hell. And also there are proofs, scientific proofs, to show that the Bible is, uh, was inspired by God, not written by human, because human will not know that the earth is hanging on nothing, and human will not know that thousands of years ago that lightning can send messages. And also there are accurate prophecies. And then, now we come to the point of God's love and salvation. God loves us very much. Now God has two main natures. God is full of love. He loves and accepts us. He doesn't want us to perish. So He loves us very much. But because people have sinned, therefore uh, we have to face judgment. And if our sins are not forgiven, then we will face eternal hell. And so He is full of love and He wants to give us salvation. At the same time, God is holy and righteous. So He will judge all people and punish sinners. So, um, he, he has to punish sinners if they don't repent of their sins and have the salvation of Jesus. 
So God has no choice. He has to punish the sinners who don't repent and trust in Jesus as the, as the Savior. So he, uh, he is holy and righteous and also He is full of love. So because He is full of love, he, the only way is that He sent His Son to die for us on the cross to pay for the penalty uh, of our sins, to bear the punishment of our sins, to satisfy the righteous requirement of God. So when Jesus died, He bare the punishment of our sins and then He satisfied the requirement of God that, that there is a price, a price has to be paid before a person can be forgiven. And the price has been paid. And the price cannot be paid by human because human all have sins, but Jesus has no sin and He paid for our, our sins. So that everyone who repents and trusts in Jesus as Savior will be saved. So that is great news because without that great news, we all will have to go to hell. But with Jesus dying on the cross, now we can go to heaven and now we can become children of God. We can be protected by God. We can be blessed by God. And God can provide for us and help us to experience God all our lifetime and have joy and peace and love for our whole lifetime. So, so it's wonderful. Our whole life, we can enjoy God and be blessed by God and also forever and ever, forever and ever, for eternity, we can enjoy God. Jesus loves us as we are, as we are, you know, that even though we are sinners, Jesus still loves us. No matter how sinful or how weak we are, God accepts us. No matter how weak or how sinful, some people have committed serious sins, and yet when we confess our sins, God will forgive us and give us eternal life. That we all have sins, you know, like 